Now I present you the English version of the small lecture about the methods of pitch bend examination. I choose this load of about four ounces found on the big dump of the mine number 371 in Hartenstein, Saxonia. The question is how much uranium oxide does this pitch blend load contain? It's heavy enough, tough. However, we want to know more precisely how much uranium oxide could be won from this load. The load doesn't always look as nice as here, where you can recognize the pitch blend area very well. Non-destructively, there are two methods. To begin with, according to density, with the assumption that the load does not contain further heavy metals or half metals. That's the formula of the mass balance. The mass balance simply leads via translation to the formula where you can determine the percentage of uranium oxide in the total mass of density. The density directly leads to the percentage. The ratio isn't linear, so you either take the curve or you calculate it separately. You get the absolute mass of uranium from the mass of and the volume of the load separately. We determine the mass by putting the load on the scales quite simply. 131.2 grams. We get the volume by the displacement methods, plunging the examinated load into distilled water. 26.2 grams equals the volume of the displaced water. It is listed in the prepared Excel table. 131.2 grams for the mass and the volume 26.2 milliliters. This makes a pitch blend of 81 grams from the density. The second method is based on the gamma radiation and the law of distance of quasi-point-shaped radiation sources. At first you have to know that uranium is a pure alpha-emitting source itself. However, a pitch blend load contains all members of the decay chain. Some of them are gamma-emitting sources. That's thorium, protactinium, another thorium, and radium, of course. Altogether, the balance is that the gamma activity of pitch blend is about 10 times higher than the activity of uranium. The starting point is a law of distance. The activity gives the radiation depending on the distance. If we replace the activity with the formula of the number of particles, the next term is brought up. Here insert the values for the molar mass, the half value time and the Avogadro constant. This way we get the fitted parameter equation. 299.7 multiplied with the dose rate in one meter distance makes the mass of uranium in grams. The right part of the term reflexes the effect of inner attenuation during the measurement in the load itself. The inner attenuation depends on the attenuation coefficient of the material and the thickness of the load in the direction of measurement. These considerations are based on the imagination that you can picture the load decomposed in infinite many and infinite thin slices. From every of these thin slices, radiation has to overcome another material thickness to reach the detector. So, the slice back here has to surmount uneven more material to the detector. This is managed mathematically by integration. The infinite many and infinite thin slices are added 
in the load's extension according to the attenuation law. Integration from O to D through whole the load from O to D. And this way you get the term shown just before. By that, the attenuation coefficient lambda d is depending on the density with this simple rel relation. Who doesn't like integration can do without it, using the calculated nicely table in front of you. So let's assume that the density of the load lay at 5 grams per milliliter and the thickness in measuring direction at 8 centimeters. Now, you had to multiply the dose rate with a factor good 2 to get the correct value for the uranium mass inside the load. We have already got mass and volume. That's the formula uh, to calculate the mass of uranium shown just before, now laid down axle conforming. We only need the result of the radiation measurement the distance in the measurement setup and the thickness of the object in measurement direction. The thickness in measurement direction is 2 cm. As you see, the pitch blend isn't spread equally across the load and when I measure across one side, I get another result as when I measure from the other one. So, I have to measure each side and take the average. We do this with the help of the RAM2 device. Here is a meter with a display, a scintillation measuring head as detector, and the support plate for the measuring object. Firstly, the pitch blend is laid with the pitch blend side to the top. The detector is started and start of measurement. 340, 350, and that's the first pulse rate. Now the load is turned and measured again from the other side. Start of second measurement. 260, 270 as test result. The zero effect was determined with three impulses per minute before. The first measurement was 350 impulses per minute and the second 270. Average of pause minus zero effect. Effective value comes to 307. The distance from the yellow support plate and to the detector is 15 centimeters in our case and the thickness in measurement direction 2 centimeters. Then the result is 68 grams compared with the 81 from the density examination. This is a quite good accordance. So you can assume that the result is realistic after all. Now we know this pitch blend specimen of 131.2 grams contains 68 grams of uranium oxide. We got this information without destroying it. This pretty pitch blend load is pretty as before.